Okay, before we jump into the math functions, let's get rid of this alternate sweep situation. We don't need to look at two asynchronous signals to try and understand the math functions. It gets too messy. So we're going to take our trigger mode out of alternate. My oscilloscope wakes up. And we're going to change it to the edge trigger mode, which is a very popular trigger mode used by most people. So now we're in edge trigger mode. And we have our unusual waveform. So let me stop for a second and plug up some new signals. For this lesson on math functions, we decided that we wanted to make it so that you could replicate the same thing at your location. So we decided to put channel 1 on the probe compensator signal and channel 2 on the same probe compensator signal. So next what we want to do is select channel 1, which is already selected. So probably end up turning it off by accident. I have turned it off. Okay, channel 1 is selected. And what I'm going to do is position it at 0 volts DC reference level, because I'm using DC coupling. So position at 0 volts. Okay, it's done. Select channel 2. And position it at 0 volts also. So now it's setting at 0 volts. Now let's go into our math function. And when we add A plus B, it's obvious that we take double these two to get, in other words, the math is twice, this, which is the sum of these two signals here. So it's twice as high. In the previous lesson, we asked you, what does this invert do? Well, actually, what it does, you can see it real clear here. It simply inverts the math waveform. That's all it does. Inverts the math waveform, doesn't affect the other two waveforms. If I wanted to invert any one of the other two waveforms, I simply go to a channel, and on the second page of that channel, I can invert that channel. So I've inverted my yellow. Notice that now, when I go back to my math menu, Since the two, it's the sum of the two, since this is plus 3 volts, this is minus 3 volts, the sum is 0 volts for the math output voltage. So I'm going to undo that, because it's not good to have your channel inverted. You might forget later on, run into some new problems. So we'll go back to channel 1. And turn off the invert. Now channel 1 is the same as channel 2. There's another way we can display the difference between these two waveforms, and that's to use the subtract math function. So if I press F1 and select A minus B, then the net result of A is plus 3, B is plus 3, so A minus B, 3 minus 3 is 0, so the mass scale still ends up with a flat line, which means the two signals have no differences between them. I want to show you what happens when signals do have differences between them. One way to do that is to simply change the scale of one of the signals. So we'll change this scale here on channel 1. Then we go back to our math function. Notice that it didn't change. It's because the signal did not change. We just changed the way we were looking at the signal. But the signal is still the same 3 volt signal. We're just looking at it on a different scale. We're working on a 5 volt scale. So changing the scale doesn't, doesn't do the job. In case you thought it would. It's so like me, you're mistaken. I just changed the scale on that math function. So let's go back and put the channel one scale back where it belongs. Make it the same as the other one. Just 
two volts. If I get go the right direction. Okay, so now both scales are the same, and the difference between the two signals is still zero. No matter how we display it on the screen, the mass scale is measuring the difference between the signals. He doesn't care what your scale on the screen looks like. He only cares about the absolute values of the two signals. And when we inverted that one signal, we changed its absolute direction to the other direction. All right, now for the good part. Let's say we want to see what happens if a circuit provides a phase shift in a signal. So channel A, channel 1 would be the input signal, which is yellow. Channel 2 would be the output signal, which is blue. So I turned off channel 1 by accident. So now channel 2 and channel 1 are both back on. I'm looking for a non-zero condition if there's any difference, if it gets shifted in any way. Well, if you remember from the previous lesson, we can get separate triggers for the two channels by using the alternate function. I don't think the creators ever conceived using it in this way, but certainly we'll get the job done. So let's go down here to our trigger menu. We'll go to alternate mode of operation before I do that, let me demonstrate why. Right now, if I try to change the trigger position, the horizontal position, all it does is move both signals. And that makes sense. We only have one time base, this time base right here. So both signals are offset from the trigger point by 88 microseconds. So let's put that back where it belongs with the uh, zero position button pushing on the horizontal position button brings them all back. So I trigger offset is zero once again. But if we go to our alternate mode, we get two separate trigger circuits. So then we can slide one waveform independent of the other waveform. So what we have to do is select alternate. So I'll jump down the alternate. Something went wrong there. Let's try it again. Jump down four positions to alternate and select alternate. Now you notice we have two trigger functions. And I purposely have one delayed. So let's let's get this one back. That one's triggered. Channel one. They're both triggered different, huh? So let's go ahead and zero those triggers. So we'll go to channel one. Let me zero the offsets. So we'll click the offset, clear that out. So now the offset of channel one is zero. We we'll go to channel two. Clear the horizontal offset off channel two to zero. Now it's zero. So now both waveforms are in the same alignment on oscope screen. And notice that our mass scale shows that there's nothing coming out. Both signals are the same. Let's slide the bottom signal over a little bit. We can do that with two triggers. So we're on the channel two right now. Channel two. So let's slide channel 2 over I hit the wrong thing, hit the scale, duh, don't I? Gotta get it back where it belongs 500 microseconds is where it was okay, it's what happens when you push the wrong button I meant to do the position button. We're going to slide the blue waveform over to the right. We slid it over 220 microseconds. 